the piglets from the live e cells, they actually have a better ability, I would say better, uh, a higher expressions of some of the inflammatory markers, such as interleukin 10 or some uh, antioxidant markers, such as the catalyst or superoxide dismutase, which may kind of indicate the maternal, like the live supplementation could confer these beneficial effects in the cycling period. Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine nutrition research digested for you. I'm your host, Clayton Chastain, and today we have with us Yu Chef Fu, a PhD student at Purdue University. So Yu Chef, before we begin, would you mind giving the audience a short introduction about yourself? Uh, of course. So I'm Yu Chef Fu. I'm currently a PhD student in the Department of Animal Sciences at Purdue University. So before that, I completed my bachelor's degree in veterinary medicine at Southwest University in 2019. And after that, I came to Purdue for my master's degree with a focus on animal physiology and behavior. And in 2022, I joined Dr. Kola Jo and Dr. Laia Dula's lab for my PhD with a focus on the swine nutrition and physiology. Gotcha. Yeah, I know a lot of those names being from Purdue Animal Science master's grad myself. But um, so I want to talk about some of the research that you've been doing there um, as part of your PhD dissertation. So I see that some of it's been revolving around yeast supplementation to sows and then kind of tracking how that uh, the different performance and physiological effects within her piglets. So could you tell us a little bit about some of that work you've been doing? So my PhD fo- uh, project focuses on the using the supplementation with the live yeast to the cells starting from the late gestation, which starting from actually day 77 of gestation and until the whole lactation. And our previous studies have already found like the this kind of supplementation can improve the nutrient digestibility of the nursery pigs. And my study is actually focusing on more like the suckling and mewling wing pigs. And we are trying to measure some markers in the whole intestines such as immune-related markers, some cytokine uh, expressions, also some antioxidant enzymes, and trying to see if the maternal IV supplementation could induce a beneficial effects as early as like during the cycling period. Gotcha. So how did you, um, so for the study that you ran, how did you kind of set up and measure all your performance parameters? So this, like the, the current study I'm doing is more focusing on like the changes at the like the gut level instead of the performance but we do measure the performance changes but we however we did not see any differences in terms of the like the birth weight the all the reproductive performances or the soil performances but we do say like it probably means like the observed beneficial effects is not like directly translated into the gross performance part but it may it may indicate because we know like improving the animal's nutrition in the early stages can confer long-term beneficial effects. However, these beneficial effects may be not that apparent during the early stages. And from my study, we, when we measure some expressions of some cytokines or antioxidant enzymes, we did find some changes in terms of the piglets from the control cells or versus the piglets from the cells with the live yeast supplementation. And the piglets from the live yeast cells, they actually have a better ability, I would say better, uh, a higher expressions of some of the inflammatory markers, such as interleukin 10 or some uh, antioxidant markers, such as the catalyst or superoxide dismutase, which may kind of indicate the maternal, like the live yeast supplementation could confer these beneficial effects in the cycling period. But my study is now continued like for the nursery period, but it would be very interesting if we can look at the long-term effects on their performance change. Gotcha. So with this this yeast supplementation, how exactly does it work when you feed it to the sow? What like mechanisms are there within her that you would then expect to see these changes within her piglets? So the live yeast we are using in this study is actually very common. It's a commercial strain called Saccharomyces cerevisiae. And we know the yeast cell wall, they contains a small fermentable component, which can actually undergo slowly fermentation. 
And during this fermentation, it can lead to some productions of short-chain fatty acids, also reduce the pH in the gastrointestinal tract, which could potentially inhibit the growth of some pathogenic bacteria. And also, on the other hand, the lab yeast can function as a prebiotic, which we know the prebiotics, they play multiple roles like in regulating the animal health. So first uh, uh, is a uh, immunomodulatory effects by activating some immune cells to release some antibodies or some anti-inflammatory cytokines, or it can improve the antioxidant capacities by improving some enzymes, antioxidant enzy- enzymes such as catalase, superoxide, dismutase. And also the very important part is that the studies have found the live yeast can actually strengthen the gut barrier by increase, increasing some expressions of the tight junction protein members or adherent junction protein members. So the tight junctions are actually multiple protein complexes uh, between the epithelial cells. If they have higher expressions, that means the piglet have a better gut health. So yeah, but how does it translate into the uh, piglets? Because we know we are actually feed the like live yeast to the cells. How does it translate into piglets? We know like during the cycling period, the major nutrient source or the sole nutrient source is just the sour milk for the cycling piglets. So it actually, so our like hypothesis is that it potentially could improve some bioactive compounds or some immunoglobulins in the milk or colostrum. And this actually can be absorbed by the piglets. And they when they actually have a better quality or quantity of the colostrum or milk, it, co- it could induce a, be- a beneficial effects of the piglets and potentially influence them like in the long-term phases. Yep. Gotcha. So with this line of research, then what do you plan on doing any more research or like you mentioned the nursery period, like maybe kind of tracking this into the nursery or what, are, what would you say are the next steps for you, you and your team um, when looking at this live yeast supplementation? So that is actually a great question. So for my part, I probably want to do more mechanistic studies to say the first is to say, how does the live yeast actually induce these beneficial effects? So we am actually currently analyzing some data from the milk proteomes, and we actually see the cells with the live yeast supplementation, their classroom or the milk, they have a higher expressions of some immune associated proteins, which may kind of correlated to my previous statement, like the maternal life supplementation could improve the gut health probably by improving the expressions of some immune associated proteins in the classroom and milk. So the second part I, we would like to test if, cause we know the microbiome present everywhere and we would like to say if actually the live yeast supplementation can improve some beneficial microbes in the cell classroom and milk and trying to corresponding to the piglet's intestinal microbiota and see if we have we can see some changes in terms of the the microbiome and also i think right now i'm uh, I'm currently analyzing some data from my premix data from the piglet intest intestinal level because before we have we have done the milk premix analysis and we would like to see if the piglets there are some specific proteins or they have like different functions or some beneficial functions can actually present in the suckling period of the piglets. Gotcha. Well, thank you, Yuchi, for coming on the show. I believe that's all the time we have, but I appreciate you coming on and sharing all your research with us. Thank you. Yep. And to everyone else, thank you for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. Please visit us at swinenutritionblackbelt.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channel so you won't miss out on the next episode. See you next week.